Hello again, first graders. Let's read part two of chapter 10 and find out what is going on with Keith, why he's acting so strange and tired and why he doesn't feel well. Where did we stop? Let's see. Oh, Mr. Gridley filled a glass at the wash basin and brought it to Keith. Here, son, drink this. When Keith had drunk the water, he fell back on the pillow and closed his eyes. His parents went quietly into room 216. When it was good and dark, Ralph ventured through the knothole. He could hear Keith breathing deeply, and he knew that he was asleep. Since he had no one to talk to, he found his little crash helmet where he had hidden it behind the curtain and after he had adjusted the rubber band under his chin, he climbed up to the windowsill to look out into the world beyond the hotel and to dream about the lost motorcycle. From his perch on the windowsill, Ralph saw that the parking lot held more cars than usual. This meant that the motels back on the highway were full and travelers had followed the sign pointing to the Mountain View Inn. He could hear the holiday weekend activity in the halls too. People walking up and down, luggage being set with a thump on the floor, keys rattling in locks. Gradually, as the night wore on, the hotel grew silent. More silent than usual for now, even the second, oh, for now, even the second floor mice were quiet. There was no scurrying, scrabbling or squeaking inside the walls. In the silence, Keith tossed in his sleep and, and mumbled something that sounded like motorcycle. In a moment, his mother slipped through the doorway, pulling her robe on over her nightgown. Ralph hid behind the curtain, peeping out just enough to see what was going to happen. She laid her hand on her son's forehead and murmured, oh dear. Almost at once, she was joined by Keith's father who was tying the belt on his bathrobe. What's the trouble, he asked. Keith has a fever, answered the mother. He's burning up. Ralph was shocked. The boy really was sick. It was not too many peanuts or too much hiking. The boy was really and truly sick. The father turned on the lamp on the bedside table and he too laid his hand on the boy's forehead. Keith opened his eyes. I'm so hot, he mumbled, I want a drink. His mother pulled back a blanket while the father brought a glass of water and held, it up, held up his son's head so he could drink part of it. Ralph watched anxiously, but this time he was not selfishly concerned about room service. He was concerned about Keith. The boy who had saved him from a terrible fate in the wastebasket and who had trusted him with his motorcycle, the boy who had forgiven him when he had lost that motorcycle and who had brought food, not only for Ralph, but for his whole family. We had better give him an aspirin to bring down his temperature, said Mrs. Gridley. Mr. Gridley started toward, toward room 216, stopped. He snapped his fingers as if he had just remembered something. I took the last one back in Rock Springs, Wyoming, he said. I had a headache from driving towards the sun all afternoon. I meant to buy some more when we stopped, but I didn't think of it again until now. I should have thought of it myself, said Mrs. Gridley. I knew we were almost out. Never mind, I'll get some. Mr. Gridley picked up the telephone, listened shook it, listened again and said, that's peculiar, the line seems to be dead. They must disconnect the switchboard at night, said the mother. Remember how phones that had cords long ago were plugged into the wall? Well, if the wires were disconnected at night, then you couldn't make a phone call. The wires would have to be connected for you, you to be able to call. But surely there's someone on duty at the desk downstairs. Every hotel has a night clerk. I'll go find out, said the father, and slipped out the door into the hall. I'm so hot, mumbled Keith. 
I'm so hot. His mother wrung out a washcloth in cold water and laid it on her son's forehead. You'll feel better as soon as we get you an aspirin, she whispered. The minutes dragged by. What's keeping him, thought Ralph. Why doesn't he hurry? The old hotel snapped and creaked. Keith rolled and tossed, trying to find a cool spot on the pillow, and his mother wrung out the washcloth in more cold water. When's dad coming? asked Keith, his eyes bright and his cheeks flushed. In a minute, soothed his mother. He'll be here in a minute. I wish he would hurry, thought Ralph. Still, the minutes dragged. Finally, footsteps were heard in the hall and Mr. Gr Gridley returned to room 215. He's here with the aspirin, whispered Mrs. Gridley to Keith. At last, thought Ralph, I thought he would never come. Mr. Gridley shook his head. There isn't an aspirin to be found any place. He sounded thoroughly exasperated. First of all, the night clerk was sound asleep on a couch in the lobby. <laughs> He's supposed to be taking care of the, the main desk in the lobby, but he was sleeping. I had a dickens of a time waking him up, and when I finally did manage to, he couldn't find any aspirin anywhere. Oh no, exclaimed the mother. Oh no, echoed Ralph's thoughts. What about that little gift shop off the lobby? Asked Mrs. Gridley. It must sell aspirin. Locked up tight and the clerk went home with the key, answered Mr. Gridley. Oh dear. The night clerk was really very nice about it, said the father. He even came up and looked in the housekeeper's office. How far is the nearest drugstore? 25 miles back on the main highway, answered the father. And it closed at 10 o'clock and it doesn't open until nine in the morning. The mother held her watch under the lamp. And it's almost one o'clock. It's hours until morning. She crossed the room to wring out the washcloth again. What will we do? What can we do? Asked the father helplessly. I even telephoned the doctor, but there has been a bad accident back on the highway and he can't come. The night clerk said he would telephone the milkman before he starts his route at six and ask him if he can bring some aspirin, but he won't get here till seven or later. All we can do is wait. Keith tossed under the cold washcloth. Mom, I, I think I'd like to go to sleep now, he muttered thickly. I guess that's all you can do, said his mother, and bent over to kiss his hot forehead before she turned out the light. Ralph did not even wait for the boy's parents to leave the room. As soon as the light was out, he leaped silently to the carpet, and by the time they had gone through the doorway into room 216, he had hidden his little crash helmet behind the curtain and was halfway through the knothole. Somewhere, some place in that hotel, there must be an aspirin tablet, and Ralph was going to find it. He only wished he had the motorcycle so he could travel faster. Do you remember hearing about an aspirin tablet earlier in the book? Something bad happened with an aspirin tablet to somebody in Ralph's family. Mm. We have to stop there because that's the end of chapter 10, but next time we'll read chapter 11, The Search. Sounds like a dangerous mission. Bye-bye. <laughs>